Today's video sponsor is GGG Mobile. Where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, the shit game plays. I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So before going into the drivers video, just check out this video that I made some days ago of the AMD history and innovations. It's a mini documentary um, and I think it is pretty okay for my first mini documentary. So lay an eye on it, you may actually enjoy it. As for today's video, we have the Adrenaline 22.8.2 drivers. And as I say in all my videos, 22 is the year 2022, 8 is the month August, and 2 is the second revision in that month, so the second revision of August. And well, as usual, let's start with the release notes, and in the end we actually have benchmarks, and before that we have my experience with these drivers. So firstly we have the highlights with support for Saints Row with DirectX 12, and the bridge Curse Road to Salvation. These are the only highlights and support for that we have in these drivers. Then we have fixed issues and some really interesting ones. The first one is VCE presets may be missing in Vegas Pro with some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon RX 6600 graphics. People were actually complaining about uh, some issues with Vegas Pro with incorrect colors, uh, incorrect color palette, uh, in between other things and it seems at least that these drivers fix those issues. Tell me in the comment section if they do or not, because I do not actually use Vegas Pro, so I don't really know. The second one is DaVinci Resolve Studio 17 may crash using AMD encoder on some AMD graphics products such as the RX 6900 graphics, 6900 XT graphics. So this is the same as the Vegas Pro, but now we actually have a problem that DaVinci Resolve would crash and it seems to be fixed as well. The third one is while playing Lost Ark, flickering may be intermittently experienced after changing display settings or checking info with some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon RX 6800 graphics. Another fixed one. And the final one is Final Fantasy VII Remastered fails to launch. Why? Anyway, that's all for the fixed issues, so let's go into the known issues. The first known issue is stuttering may be experienced while playing Call of Duty Warzone on Caldera map with some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon RX 6900 XT graphics. And once again, why? Why it seems like the, the RX 6900 XT graphics are kind of doomed because they are packed with lots of issues. I myself tried the 6950 XT for quite some time, um, I tested 25 games on it, I tested more games for the GPU comparisons, I played with it and it was completely fine, the 6950 XT Red Devil, but it seems that the 6900 XT is plagued with issues and you may be lucky or unlucky uh, when using those cards. I tested Warzone with the 6950 XT and it was perfect perfectly fine, smooth as hell, as you can see in the current gameplay, so I don't see why the 6900 XT has those issues and why they aren't still fixed. Some stuttering may be experienced while playing Fortnite with DirectX 11 API, Radeon Super Resolution may fail to trigger after changing resolution or HDR settings on games such as Nioh 2, also a known issue from some time ago. Oculus dashboard menu and rendered controllers may appear bouncing slash wobbly on Oculus Quest 2 with some AMD graphics products such as Radeon RX 6800, 6800 XT. So it seems that we had some VR fixes in the, in the past drivers, but at least these ones bring more known issues about the Oculus dashboard. Some people still have the dashing slash bouncing effect and it seems that AMD acknowledges that. So it is prone to soon be fixed, which is good in my opinion. Yeah. GPU utilization may be stuck at 100% in Radeon performance metrics after closing games on AMD graphics products such as the Radeon 570. This is also a, a problem from quite some time ago and I still don't know why AMD didn't fix it yet. I mean, why? It's, it's just 
in one GPU it seems uh, some people have this problem, some don't. Why can't you replicate this and why isn't it fixed already? Uh, because if the GPU metrics aren't supposed to work properly, why do you actually have them in your software? While previewing the timeline in Vegas Pro, some colors may appear inverted. Yes, I thought that this problem was actually fixed with the previous fixed issues, but it seems that it isn't. In some cases, you may actually have one part of the Vegas Pro fixed, but you still have these problems with the colors, it appears. So it's kind of a bummer. So if you're using Vegas Pro, I advise you to use uh, like the 22.6.1 drivers that are optional, but are also the last WHQL uh, signed. So they are supposed to be stable. And the last two ones are, display may briefly show corruption when switching between video and game windows on some AMD graphics products such as the RX 6700 XT. And the last one is, enhanced sync may cause an intermittent black screen to occur during gameplay and video playback using extended displays and toggling enhanced sync. So it seems that um, things are quite better than they were because we actually have uh, less problems with enhancing finally and uh, the problem that we have so the known issues that we have for enhanced sync are clearly way way uh, or in this case less worse than they were before enhanced sync also has improved a lot in the previous driver version they made uh, kind of an overhaul of the enhanced sync technology and they improved it hence having less bugs or at least that's how it should be and well, we also have some important things on the important notes, or ends being important. Uh, not all of them are important, but these ones are actually important. OpenGL applications that are 10-bit aware are no longer supported with HDR capabilities. Enabling 10-bit pixel format in advanced graphics settings is only recommended for use of 10-bit aware OpenGL applications and not required for enabling 10-bit uh, color display capabilities. So. 10-bit pixel format, HDR, and 10-bit color reproduction seems to be kind of messy with OpenGL applications. Um, so yeah. And the one that actually is important as well is AMD is working with the game developers of Saints Row to resolve issues using DirectX 11 and Vulkan API. Users are recommended to launch Saints Row with DirectX 12. Hybrid graphics users are also recommended to use high performance mode in Windows graphic preferences. Not that the three people actually playing Saints Row give a fuck, but well, at least <laughs> it seems that AMD is recommended the X12 instead of the X11 and Vulkan API for the Saints Row game because, well, it's a, it's a fucking mess. But anyway, it is what it is. Now, as for my experience with these drivers, let's start from the beginning. When I installed the 22.8.2 drivers, it happened the same as the 22.8.1 drivers. So, in the first time I loaded the system after installing the drivers, the software just wouldn't load. It just wouldn't open. So, I had to manually open it, uh, going to the search bar, selecting AMD Adrenaline software, and then it opened flawlessly, worked flawlessly, but the first time it actually didn't open and I, I, I just don't really know why, it makes no sense. As for the 6700, well, people were constantly asking me to test the 6700 to see if it actually improved from the first drivers that it had, the 22.5.2 to the current 22.8.2, so three months. Um, and it seems that they are actually better, yes? Uh, I tested Far Cry 6 and I tested PUBG. In PUBG, I actually had higher FPS with the 22.8.2 with lower power draw and lower CPU temperatures and, low, and even lower CPU, uh, GPU temperatures. So lower temperatures, lower overall temperatures, uh, the same power draw and better performance on PUBG, which is great. And on Far Cry 6, we actually had better 1% lows across all the benchmark, uh, um, leading us to believe that the 6700 XT has actually improved its overall performance from the 22.5.2 uh, to the 22.8.2. Don't worry, because as soon as the Zen 4 CPUs come out and I actually get those, uh, get one of those, I will retest, I will completely retest all the GPUs. So that's a thing also. 
Um, and with those retests, I'll be also adding ray tracing results and in some scenarios like one or two games, I will also be testing FSR 2.0 uh, results and for the Nvidia cards, the LSS results as well. As for the RX 5700 XT, we actually have the opposite results. In one of the games that I tested, Forza Horizon 5, it actually has the same exact results uh, as in the previous drivers, the 22.6.1, which are the, the last WHQL sign. As for PUBG, we have less FPS, and you heard it right, less FPS. I even rebooted the PC, I cleaned, I reinstalled the drivers once again, and no, I just can't have more FPS than that. It seems that the 22.8.2 drivers are bugged with the 5700 XT and PUBG. I would keep the 22.6.1 drivers for the 5700 XT as they seemed the most stable um, and the most and the the ones with better smoothness overall. Yeah, let's say that the ones with a better smoothness overall for the 5700 XT. And well guys, that's all for today's video, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video. Also, as always, leave your comment in the comment section because that's very important. Leave your comment telling us your experience, me and us, including the community, AMD, me and everyone. Just let us know your experience, share it uh, for the community to be able to improve it, okay? That's what I ask uh, and that's why I make these videos, as always. Thanks a lot and see you in the next video.